What's going on guys? Welcome to the video. We're back again on the grooming gang scandal, but this time my aim is firmly at the government. Because if the independent is to be believed, they have completed the review into grooming gangs and plan to keep it secret, at least for now. You will remember Sajid Javid said in 2018 they would do a full review and investigate what has been going on and release that information to the public. Even going as far as to say we will not hold back because of political or religious sensitivities. You know what, let's take a look at the clip to remind ourselves. Uh, when I made that comment I was stating the facts and, and the sad truth is that if you look at recent high profile convictions of gang based child sexual exploitation there's a majority of people that come from Pakistani heritage backgrounds. And that's plain for, their, uh, for everyone to see. And what I've said is that we, in trying to deal with this, trying to turn this around, there, we must look at you know, all factors and we must not be too sensitive and shy away or be oversensitive. And that's why I think that it, we should be looking at to see if there are any cultural issues. And that's why I've commissioned some research on this. They've said, look, thank God there is someone who's taken this issue seriously, because I think part of the problem in the past has been that perhaps some of the, uh, when, when this issue first came about in, in some of these communities, Huddersfield, in Rotherham and other places, that maybe the law enforcement, maybe social workers and others didn't take this issue seriously enough because they didn't want to be accused of racism. And that's wrong. Someone's race when it comes to crime is utterly irrelevant. They should always be investigated and then prosecuted if there's enough evidence and I want to make sure that's exactly what's happening and that's why I think we need a proper review of this and a proper look at this. So Sajid Javid as you heard it there wanted to go full barrels against this shit but now that he's not in the home office or in the treasury for that fact it seems the government has changed its mind. We got the independent report in here grooming gang review kept secret as home office claims releasing findings not in the public's interest. Are you having a fucking laugh? How is it not in the public's interest to put this information out there? I would suggest it's very much in the public's interest. To the point where I'm going to stick a petition up to get this information out there. Because the government have appointed a committee chair for the petitions committee, so it won't be long now before they have a full committee up and we can put some government petitions in to get this discussed in the House of Commons. Because I would seriously beg to differ that this is not in the public's interest. I mean, we have to remember the government made the case to convict the likes of Tommy Robinson for contempt of court at the Old Bailey, which cost us God knows how much money, probably half a million or a million pounds, I can't remember how much it was, claiming that was in the public's interest. And they even give him 13 months for something they would usually just fine people for. Now, what would you consider to be more in the public's interest? A contempt of court case against someone who was reporting on grooming gangs or releasing the report on the actual grooming gangs? It's just incredible shit this is and part of the reason why I said you can never trust any government. The government is refusing to release official research on the characteristics of grooming gangs claiming it's not in the public's interest. Fucking hell. Survivors accused ministers of making empty promises. Yeah, I'm accusing them of the same as well. While a man who prosecuted abusers in Rochdale called for the Home Office to show some courage and publish its findings. It comes after the Independent revealed that almost 19,000 suspected child sexual exploitation victims were identified by local authorities in just one year sparking renewed calls for prevention efforts. No, they weren't sparking renewed calls, they were just sparking them from other people that you won't run around calling racist. Sajid Javid promised the review as Home Secretary in July 2018, as we heard a minute ago, pledging that there would be no no-go areas of inquiry. Which, maybe he was right, but now the Home Office, it seems, don't want that information to go out there because it's not in the public interest. I will not let cultural or political sensitivities get in the way of understanding the problem and doing something about it, he said at the time, which we heard just a moment ago. We know that in these recent high profile cases where people convicted have been disproportionately from a Pakistani background. Yeah, disproportionately is definitely one way of putting it. I've instructed my officials to explore the particular context and characteristics of these type of gangs. But the government has made no further announcements on the review following Mr Javid's move to the Treasury last year. 
It has, however, said it will soon publish a national strategy that will set out a whole system response to all forms of child sexual abuse. Meaning we'll keep this to ourselves and just broaden it out so we don't have to point out the fact that these are Pakistani rape gangs targeting young white girls. Which, let me tell you, if it was on the other foot, would be considered fucking racist. Notice how the government are skirting around it here. No better than Labour, in my opinion, when it comes to this. In December, the Independent was told that the work had been completed, but would only be used for internal policy making and would not be publicly released. So why didn't you point this out in December then, the Independent, you worthless fuck pigs? Just as bad as the government keeping information from the public. Then again, I expect no less from remoning shit weasels like the Independent. We've seen their performances in recent months and years, let's be honest. In response to a freedom of information request asking for the research carried out and any reports drawn up as a result, the Home Office confirmed it held the information but would not release it. So there it is guys, the Home Office are acting like a bunch of shit weasels, keeping information from the public because they know it's going to cause fucking uproar. Bunch of absolute cowards. In a letter to the Independent, officials said they had applied a public interest test, but the information was exempt from the act because it concerned the development of government policy. One of the main purposes of the exemption is to protect the safe space, necessary for ministers and officials to consider policy options in private, without risk of premature disclosure, it added. Disclosure would risk preempting decisions still to be made by ministers. In addition, the information could be misleading if made public and used out of context. No, you mean it would be pretty damning if used in the context that it is, and the context is not allowed to be set by shit weasels like the Home Office. At the end of the day, people raping people is never taken out of context for fuck's sake. There is no context to be considered. Someone is raping someone, it's against the fucking law. You give the facts of it, simple as that. It shouldn't matter what race, religion or anything else the perpetrator or the victim is, the information should just be there, if it's requested and in the public's interest, like this is. The Home Office Freedom of Information Unit said the documents also include operationally sensitive information from the police and could prejudice ongoing investigation. Okay, well you could have redacted those bits out, though that always leaves the option to redact most of it out, which would have happened anyway, I'm sure. And here in this next statement, completely contradicting everything they've said so far, the letter added, We recognise that this topic in general and any insight and learning are matters of strong public interest. A minute ago it weren't in the public's interest, you fucking idiot. Make your mind up. Although it does not necessarily follow that it is in the public's interest to disclose any specific information relating to it. No, you should disclose the entire thing, nothing less. Sammy Woodhouse, a Rotherham victim who helped expose the scandal, told The Independent she believed the research was going to be made public. Yeah, that's what I believed as well. I think most people did. Though I must say I did kind of suspect that they might try and cover it up or hide it a little bit. It is always possible these are politicians we're talking about. I always got the impression they were going to do a full report and get something official, she said. A lot of people were backing it. It's ridiculous. They're not releasing it. Yeah, I agree with that. It's a complete fucking disgrace. We keep hearing we're going to do this and that. When it actually comes to it, there's nothing. Welcome to governments and politicians. It's empty promises all the time. Another woman who was also sexually abused by grooming gangs in Rotherham and wanted to remain anonymous said she was disappointed and frustrated by the decision not to release the report. The government's repeated failure to acknowledge the role of racism and religious bigotry in grooming gang crime has led to inadequate investigation, protection and prosecution, she said. Well fucking done for pointing it out like it actually is. Too many people beat around the bush. It's religious bigotry and racism all rolled into one. Because, while they mostly do it to white girls, there are reports of them doing it to Sikh girls, and I think a few others. Because if it was on the other foot, it would almost certainly be considered religious or racially motivated. Prevention of future grooming gang crime can only come through counter-narrative sex and relationship education. The woman is campaigning for changes to hate crime guidance, and the creation of a parliamentary committee to examine gender-based violence linked to faith and belief. Yep, maybe I need to start a second petition up or see if there's one already out there and give it a bit of promotion, because that is something that could be useful. A parliamentary committee to examine gender-based violence 
linked to faith and belief. I'm sure they could probably add a few other things in there as well. A former chief prosecutor who initiated charges against a grooming gang in Rochdale warned that far-right groups were using a vacuum of reliable information to spread their beliefs and gain support. Oh, so you mean people with common sense were using the vacuum of factual information out there to spread their belief that gangs of Pakistani men raping young girls is wrong and gain support for that? Are you fucking hearing yourself there? I like how they said it's reliable information, though, because it's obviously factual. Nazir Afzal said he had been calling for formal research on potential links between ethnicity and street-based abuse since 2012. The misinformation and anecdote are exploited by white supremacists and others with an agenda, he added. What, you mean like protecting children from being raped? That's not an agenda, that's what everyone should be doing, you fucking idiot. The sooner we have evidence, the sooner we can truly confront it, the Home Office should show some courage and publish it. Yeah, they should, but I think the reasons why they won't publish it is because the facts of it might help those so-called white supremacists or people with an agenda. Like I said, the ones who want to stop children from being raped by gangs of men from Pakistani or any other origin. Because I'm sure the report will include many other races as well. It won't just be Pakistanis or Muslim, they will be in it. How big of a part they are going to play in it remains to be seen, but there will be lots of different groups, that you can be sure. Mr Javid's original pledge was in response to a letter from a cross-party group of politicians who called for the Home Office to undertake research into common patterns of behaviour and drivers of grooming gangs. Sarah Champion, the Labour MP for Rotherham, was among the signatories and voiced hope at the time that the review would prevent abuse and protect children. The Home Office said it will soon publish a national strategy that will set out a whole system response to all forms of child sexual abuse. No, release the fucking report and then do your system response. It's not exactly difficult, is it? A spokesman for the government department said child sexual abuse is a sickening crime and predators who abuse children will face the full force of the law. Okay, give them life in prison then if you want the full force of the law and tell such time, stop talking shit. And we're not going to bother reading the last bit, it just talks about the make-believe promises of what they're going to do. Remember, they said they were going to release this report and yet here we sit. So I don't think they're going to do any of those things as it stands. Hopefully they'll prove me wrong, but still, I doubt they will. But I'm sure you will all agree, the government are a bunch of cunts right now. No good snivelling shit weasels, in my opinion. How is this not in the public interest, and then, in another sentence, say that the public are very interested in this? It's fucking incredible. And goes to show, like I've said, you cannot trust any government. The Tories are selling us out on the grooming gang issue. But on that note guys, I am going to end the video there. Now before I go, I've started doing live streams and uploading gaming content on my second channel. If you would like to come and join me for a live stream to chat in real time, have an interest in gaming related content on YouTube, or just want to follow me over there because you are a legend, the link will be down in the video description below and as a pinned comment. I hope to see you all there. Now as always, before I go, I want to thank our PayPal, Patreon, Subscribestar and YouTube members for supporting the channel along with everyone who watches my videos. Remember to let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Leave a like, subscribe with the notification bell and share this video as it helps the channel a lot and I will see you all in the next one.